In this video, we're going to look at an example of merge sort in action. So here's the code for merge sort once again. First, we check for the base case, if the vector is of size 1 or empty. In the base case, the vector is already sorted, so we can just return. Next, we create the subproblems by computing the midpoint between begin and end. Then we recursively call merge sort to sort the first half, and again call merge sort to recursively sort the second half. Finally, we combine the sorted first and second halves which, with the merge function to sort the entire half close interval from begin up to but not including end. So let's look at the working of merge sort on this vector. There are two threes in this vector, and I have put them in different colors so that we can keep track of them. We want to see why merge sort is a stable sorting algorithm. That is why the blue 3 stays to the left of the red 3 at the end of the algorithm. OK, let's start the algorithm. So I've written the indices of the vector in blue. I'm going to use these indices rather than iterators in writing the calls to merge sort. That just saves me some writing, so instead of having to write begin plus 2, I can just write 2. So we want to sort the whole vector, so initially we call merge sort with arguments 0 and 8. Okay, with these arguments, we're not in the base case, so we go ahead and call merge sort 0, 4 to sort the first half of the vector. So we're still not in the base case. So next we're going to call merge sort 0, 2. We're still not in the base case. So then we call merge sort of 0, 1. Finally, we reach the base case. So merge sort here is called on an interval of size 1. So we return. I'll put the call to merge sort 0, 1 in red since now it's finished. So now we return to the call of merge sort 0, 2, and we continue to call merge sort on the right half of that interval. So we call merge sort of 1, 2. This is again an interval of size 1. So again, we're in the base case, and we uh, just return. OK, so now that these calls are finished, we can move on to merge the results. So we merge the vector 7 with the vector that just contains 3. So these are in the wrong order, so the merge function here is going to swap them. So you see where the red arrows are, are pointing, now it says 3 and then 7. OK, so after this merge is done, then we finish the call to merge sort of 0, 2. So that call is done. We return to the call of merge sort 0, 4. And now we start working on the right half of this interval. So we call merge sort of 2, 4. This in turn is going to call merge sort of 2, 3. We're in the base case, so this call returns. And we call merge sort on the right half of the vector 2, 5. So we call merge sort of 3, 4. This is again the base case. So that call finishes and returns. And now we call the merge function. So now we're back to the call of merge sort 2, 4. And we uh, merge these vectors 2 and 5. They're already in the right order, so there's nothing to do here. OK, that concludes the call of merge sort 2, 4. So now we return to the call of merge sort 0, 4. And the next thing to do uh, there is to run merge. So we're going to merge these two vectors, the vector on the left, 3, 7, and the vector on the right, 2, 5. OK, so now I've done the merge there. And we put everything in the right order. So we have this vector 2, 3, 5, 7. OK, so now the call to merge sort 0, 4 is finished. And we return back to the top level call, the call of merge sort 0, 8. OK, so now we're going to start working through the second half of the ve vector. I'm going to go a bit faster through the second half. So the calls are very similar as, as to what happened 
in the first half. Okay, so first we call merge sort a four comma eight. We're not in the base case, so this is going to call merge sort on the left half four comma six. Still not the base case, so we're going to call merge sort a four comma five. Uh, now we've reached the base case, so this finishes returns. Then we call merge sort five comma six. Again the base case, so that's going to finish and return. So now we merge. Now we're back to the call of merge sort four comma six, and we merge these two vectors. One vector is just six. One vector is just three. They're in the wrong order, so we swap them. Okay, so now the call to merge sort four comma six is finished, and now we're back to the call of merge sort four comma eight, and we proceed by calling merge sort on the right half of that interval. So we call merge sort six comma eight. Uh, again, we call merge sort on the left half. So merge sort six comma seven. That's the base case. So we just return uh, the right half. Merge sort is seven comma eight. Again, the base case. We return. Then we merge those two vectors. They're already in the right order, so nothing to be done there. And now the call to merge sort of six comma eight finishes. So we are back to the call of merge sort four comma eight. The next thing to do there is to merge these two vectors. So the vector on the left, three comma six, and the vector on the right, one comma nine. Okay, so now we've performed this merge. We put everything in the right order. So we have the vector one, three, six, nine. And now the call to merge sort of four comma eight is finished. So now we are again back to the top level call of merge sort zero comma eight. So in this merge, you see that the blue three is in the left half and the red three is in the right half. So in this merge, we want to be sure to keep the blue three to the left of the red three. So now we see the requirement that we need in order for merge sort to be a stable sorting algorithm. We want the merge algorithm to preserve the relative order of elements that compare equal. So if your merge function does that, then merge sort using that merge function will be a stable sorting algorithm. Okay, so now we merge these uh, two vectors and the algorithm is finished. And now we see that the entire vector is sorted.